good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to start by thanking our Ortho Virginia team for putting on uh, this Facebook Live event. Um, I feel like it's a great opportunity to uh, uh, share some information with our patients and allow you to ask some questions. I'm coming to you from uh, Ortho Virginia East region here in uh, our latest office in Chesapeake, Virginia. Um, and so look forward to sharing some information with you this afternoon and taking your questions. Uh, just a little background on myself. Uh, I uh, grew up in Philadelphia, greater Philadelphia region, and uh, went to medical school there. Uh, joined the Navy uh, after September 11th, and uh, so therefore did most of my uh, training in the Navy, internship in orthopedic surgery at uh, the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland. And then um, I was a United States Navy flight surgeon for a few years and then went on to my orthopedic surgery residency, which was uh, here in Virginia. That's what brought me to this area and uh, grew to uh, love Virginia and uh, raise our family here. So um, spent a few years in residency at Portsmouth and uh, and then spent some time overseas uh, with the Navy as a general orthopedic surgeon before being selected to go to fellowship in hip and knee replacements, uh, which I completed in Boston. Uh, after that, I came back to this area uh, as a staff uh, as at a residency training program at the place where I did my residency and uh, spent five years after fellowship there training residents and uh, medical students and, and really had a great opportunity to uh, train the next generation. Just recently joined North of Virginia in the last eight months after uh, spending almost 16 years on active duty in the Navy and uh, just feel like it's been a tremendous opportunity um, to be here. So uh, that's a little background on me. Let's move on to some of the information I'd like to share with you, uh, which I'll try to keep relatively brief, and, uh, and then we'll open up to uh, have some questions. So the title of our talk here is uh, Non-Surgical and Surgical Treatment of Hip and Knee Arthritis. And uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Thanks again to our team that helped to set this up. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of background information and, and uh, behind the scenes things that really go into it. A little bit about Ortho Virginia. We are the largest orthopedic group in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, with over 30 locations now all across the state. There are 130 uh, surgeons affiliated with the practice and it's a you know, physician owned and run uh, organization. It's one of the top 10 largest orthopedic groups in the country now. And uh, so you can see I'm coming to you from our newest Chesapeake office, which is down in the East region, Fourth of Virginia. And we also have an office here in Virginia Beach. And then uh, a large concentration of offices up in Northern Virginia, as well as in the greater Richmond area, um, and then offices that extend all the way out to the Western uh, part of the state. Uh, you can find us on orthovirginia.com, uh, find a doctor and find all sorts of information. Next slide, please. So today we're talking about arthritis and so just wanted to go through uh, some very basic information about it to start. Arthritis is one of the most common degenerative disorders that that patients present to physicians for evaluation of, uh, whether it be orthopedic surgeons or uh, to their primary care providers. It is a degenerative disorder that's caused by a loss of cartilage and affects many different joints of the body. So up to one in four adults in the United States have uh, significant arthritis that impacts them. The predominant symptoms that people experience are pain, swelling, and stiffness. And as more cartilage is lost throughout the joint, uh, eventually the bone can rub on bone, that's bone on bone arthritis, and, and that's when things have uh, progressively worsened relatively significantly. As far as the causes for arthritis, it's multifactorial. There isn't necessarily one thing that you can point to that uh, is, is the, uh, the only cause of arthritis. Genetics certainly can play a role. It, arthritis is a condition particularly osteoarthritis, that does have a tendency to get worse as we get older. So uh, yes, uh, age is a predisposing factor for uh, osteoarthritis in particular. Prior trauma or uh, injuries to joints can predispose folks to developing post-traumatic arthritis, um, as well as those that have uh, instability of joint or ligamentous laxity can uh, predispose things. As well as obesity um, is a uh, another uh, predisposing factor for arthritis. Now, the most common cause of arthritis is osteoarthritis. That's the so-called uh, degenerative arthritis. But of course, there are other types of arthritis, including rheumatoid arthritis or other inflammatory arthropathies, such as 
gout. Arthritis will increase as our population um, grows and, uh, and you know, we have an aging population that um, is living longer and longer, thankfully. Uh, but that means that more, more uh, folks have a tendency to uh, experience these uh, types of, of uh, symptoms. Can it be cured? Well, at this point, not today, but uh, certainly we are hopeful for the future that uh, there will be some um, advances in years to come, but certainly no pill that we can give you or injection that we can do necessarily that can cure arthritis. It's all about managing the symptoms. Next slide, please. So when it comes to managing uh, arthritic pain, whether it be of the hip or the knee, we always like to start with non-operative management. And I think that that is, uh, is real key. And as even as an orthopedic surgeon, uh, my role in that is, is significant. Um, so how do we manage hip or knee pain without surgery? With some pretty basic things to start. So activity modifications, which means you know, trying to avoid those things that, that really tend to flare up your symptoms. If it's high impact activities, such as running, jumping, pivoting, cutting sports, trying to go to lower impact activities, such as cycling, elliptical, walking, or swimming uh, can be beneficial uh, for people's symptoms. Uh, medications are the first line of defense um, with regard to things that a physician would prescribe. Um, now, of course, there are over-the-counter pain relievers to include Tylenol and non-steroidal anti-inflammatories or NSAIDs, which include things like ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin, or uh, naproxen, Aleve. There are multiple different over-the-counter versions of NSAIDs that folks can use. Now, additionally, uh, you know, once uh, people have tried the over-the-counter remedies and those are failing to provide relief, there are prescription versions of many of those things that, um, that we can prescribe. In addition to oral medications, there are topical medications that we can prescribe for those that may have some other medical conditions that um, would preclude them maybe from taking oral medicines. After medications, there uh, are the opportunity for injections to treat arthritis, multiple different types of injections out there. Uh, the biggest ones that you hear about are cortisone injections, as well as hyaluronic acid injection or so-called gel injections. And uh, we'll talk more about that uh, as, as people have some questions about it. But generally speaking, um, these are some things that we can do in the office to try and help with people's symptoms. Exercise is a big component of managing arthritis, trying to to keep the muscles around the joint strong can help to offload some of the pain that people experience. And as people have worsening arthritis, they tend to lose range of motion. And so uh, exercise is important to try and maintain that range of motion and continue to move the joint. We find that folks who are more sedentary with their arthritis pain, believe it or not, tend to do a little bit worse than those that are more active. And so therefore, Exercise is an important component of trying to manage arthritic symptoms. Weight loss is uh, really uh, key. And just, you know, watching our waistline and even small changes around the waistline can make dramatic improvements in people's particularly lower extremity uh, arthritic pain. So, you know, three to five pound weight loss actually is worth 20 to 25 uh, pounds of less force that goes through uh, the knee or the hip. So weight loss is really key and, and even small changes are important. Uh, physical therapy can be very effective again at uh, strengthening muscles around the joint as well as trying to maintain range of motion and uh, both you know with or without an operation physical therapy uh, has a real key here braces and splints particularly uh, with regard to uh, knee arthritis braces and splints can be something that uh, is helpful for some folks and so there are a few different options there that we can provide to to our patients Alternative treatments such as uh, acupuncture or biologic therapies such as stem cell or PRP injections are additional things that uh, folks will hear about. And, uh, and so, you know, th there are things that, um, you know, certainly something to talk to your doctor about and find out what your options are. Well, what happens when uh, those non-operative treatments are failing to provide sustained relief? We're just going to talk broadly quickly about the general surgical options for hip arthritis. Uh, hip arthroscopy is a, a relatively minimally invasive type of surgery um, that is most times reserved for younger patients, so those that are less than 40 or 50 years old, um, who have 
not significant arthritis on x-rays or advanced imaging, um, but have things like femoris tabular impingement or labral tears. Sometimes hip arthroscopy can talk, uh, can help with that, excuse me. If there is the presence of relatively significant arthritis, most people um, would not necessarily be candidates for hip arthroscopy. Osteotomies, uh, osteotomy means to cut the bone. And so um, these are a relatively extensive surgery that often is done in young patients who have uh, dysplastic hip anatomy. And so not necessarily something that can help with uh, more advanced arthritis of the hip. Hip resurfacing is uh, a surgery that has historically been offered to uh, young patients with really good bone stock that are um, very active, but unfortunately has fallen out of favor in recent years and has been done less and less throughout the country, uh, partly because of the success of total hip arthroplasty, of total hip replacement, um, but also due to the fact that those components have uh, metal on metal bearings and uh, that can cause some potential options, uh, some potential complications after surgery. Uh, finally, total hip replacement has really become the gold standard for treating disabling hip pain um, in folks that uh, are typically over 40, but certainly in some younger patients who have particular uh, conditions that mandate an operation. Next slide, please. With regard to surgical options for knee arthritis, uh, knee arthroscopy or uh, so-called uh, clean out of the knee for arthritis is has been found to be relatively unpredictable at, at best and, and really should be avoided in, in patients who have moderate to severe arthritis. Um, in years past, certainly, uh, some folks have tried uh, these types of things as a minimally invasive option because they don't want to resort to a joint replacement quite yet. And I think that our literature is really showing that uh, knee arthroscopy in cases of moderate to advanced arthritis is, is not particularly useful. Uh, osteotomies around the joint uh, can be useful in uh, really young patients. And so those in their 20s or 30s, for example, an osteotomy can be considered, but again, has mostly fallen out of favor due to really inferior results compared to knee replacements in, in uh, folks as we get older. Cartilage procedures are those that harvest cartilage cells and can transplant them uh, into a focal area, uh, particularly around the knee. Um, it has to be a very specific area of uh, focal loss of cartilage for it to, to be effective. And so in cases of arthritis where it's affecting uh, multiple portions of the joint, it really does not have any significant role for cartilage uh, transplant procedures. So then we're left with uh, replacement options, and there are partial knee replacements, particularly if the arthritis is isolated to one of the three uh, compartments of the knee, as opposed to if your arthritis involves more than one compartment of the knee, then a total knee replacement is, is typically the option. And really, this is the most successful of all the surgical procedures for advanced knee arthritis. Next slide, please. So when is the time right for surgery? When do you kind of throw in the towel and resort to it? Well, number one, you have to have bone on bone degenerative joint disease of some sort. So whether it be due to osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis or a condition called avascular necrosis in the hip, all of those things eventually have the potential to end up with bone on bone degenerative joint disease. And so you have to have that on an x-ray in order to be eligible for joint replacement. Uh, number two is, uh, is symptoms drive it. And so you have to have pain that is impacting your daily activities as well as your desired recreational activities. And so I always say that, you know, it's not good to have a joint replacement so that you can continue running marathons or doing triathlons or things like that. But certainly if it's impacting your everyday activities and, uh, and more low impact recreational activities, well then, you know, that's certainly a consideration for you to, uh, with regard to surgery. And of course we will have wanted to see folks tried all the non-operative treatments that are available. So that includes medications and injections, physical therapy, exercise, weight loss. Um, and when those things have failed to provide sustained relief, well then certainly that's when a consideration for surgery uh, may be right. Joint replacement is an elective surgery in the vast majority of cases. And so um, certainly that is something to keep in mind that we're never going to drag you to the operating room for a hip or knee replacement. It's a shared decision making between our patients and their physician and uh, make sure that the time is right for you. Next slide, please. 
This is a great website from the American Association of Hip and Knee Surgeons for Patient Education. I reference it all the time with handouts and videos. Some folks like to research and uh, look into things. Others do not necessarily, but what we always want for our patients is to go to the right resources. Instead of consulting Dr. Google, make sure that you go uh, to uh, some vetted uh, places and, and get your questions answered. Um, so this is a great website to reference. Uh, next slide, please. As I said, I'm coming to you from uh, the latest expansion of Ortho Virginia here in Hampton Roads, which is this Chesapeake office. We have our uh, location as well as uh, office hours. We also have physical therapy here um, and Im imaging available right on site. So with that as some background information, I'd be happy to take any questions and uh, proceed from there, Margaret. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Pincus. So our first question is, what can I do to keep knee arthritis from getting worse? Are there specific exercises I should do or avoid? Yes. So generally speaking, my advice to folks is to try and avoid high impact activities uh, such as running, jumping, pivoting and cutting sports. But that being said, you know, that's what some folks do for their mental and physical well-being. So if you're a runner, it's hard for me to tell you not to run. And uh, so I think that you need to uh, do those things which you enjoy and that keep you uh, physically and mentally fit. Um, generally speaking, particularly with regard to knee arthritis, uh, doing anything you can to maintain range of motion and particularly strengthen the quadriceps muscle is probably the most important thing to help to offload the joint. And so you can do that either with formal physical therapy or with a home exercise program that's targeting the quad, particularly the VMO, the vastus medialis obliquus muscle. And, uh, and that's what really helps the vast majority of patients with regard to knee arthritis. Now with regard to hip, again, it's, a, it's all about trying to maintain range of motion and strengthen some of the muscles around the hip joint. Thank you. How can you tell if hip pain comes from arthritis instead of nerve pain from your lower back? This is a great question. So we are frequently uh, trying to differentiate uh, pain that comes from the lower back or is coming from the hip joint itself. And, you know, it's all about putting together the pieces of the puzzle, right? And so um, patients come in, they explain their symptoms to us. We perform a physical exam. And then we put those things together with uh, imaging in the office um, of the hip and or the lower back and uh, and try and make sure that everything kind of fits. And so the short answer is to, you know, see a physician who's familiar with evaluating these types of complaints and uh, to start with x-rays and a physical exam and uh, and help to explain to your provider what type of symptoms you're having. And they'll... they'll uh, you know, kind of walk you through it to make a diagnosis, which is the first thing to do, right? Make a diagnosis before we can make some uh, treatment recommendations. Thank you. Can yoga help prevent later hip and knee issues? Yeah, good question. Yoga is an outstanding exercise in the sense that um, it's very low impact, right? And helps to maintain, for the most part, tremendous range of motion uh, for um, those that participate in yoga. As far as preventing the development of arthritis. Uh, I, I don't know that that has um, been proven necessarily, but certainly yoga is an outstanding low impact exercise that uh, is certainly encouraged. Thank you. Is too much walking bad for your knees? No, not in my opinion. I think that, um, you know, my advice is always to let pain be your guide. And so uh, walking certainly is a, a low impact exercise that uh, can really be beneficial, not only uh, for your joints, but uh, cardiovascularly um, uh, to help, uh, you know, help folks um, in good aerobic health, as well as um, helps with weight loss. And so all of those factors are really key to the management of arthritic type of symptoms. Now, that being said, if you're going out and walking uh, eight, 10 miles a day, and then you're coming home and sitting with ice bags on your knees uh, for the night, uh, then that may be too much. And so I always recommend that you kind of let pain be your guide with regard to, uh, to any of your activities, really. Thank you. What is the gel injection and how is it different from cortisone injections? Great question. So uh, gel injections are uh, hyaluronic acid type of injections. And as opposed to cortisone, which are 
anti-inflammatory injections. So uh, cortisone is uh, essentially like putting anti-inflammatory medication directly into the knee joint to decrease inflammation. And a lot of folks think of hyaluronic acid or gel injections as more of a lubricant type of injection. Now, cortisone injections for arthritis probably has stronger data in our literature. Um, now, that being said, uh, a lot of folks still um, uh, do hyaluronic acid injections or gel injections, and we have many patients that find great relief from them. There are some challenges with both of those things. So uh, hyaluronic acid injections are more expensive and frequently will require uh, pre-authorization through an insurance company. And so, you know, there are some hoops that folks uh, sometimes have to jump through with those. Um, but, you know, I think the important thing is to talk to your doctor about it and, uh, and find out whether or not it is something that can be helpful for you. Those gel injections, I think, are particularly or can be beneficial in the, the earlier stages of arthritis, as opposed to those that really have advanced bone on bone disease. Um, doing hyaluronic acid or gel injections, you know, may not be the best choice in those particular scenarios. Thank you. Someone says that they are scheduled for a head replacement surgery, but it's really their legs that hurt. Should the leg pain go away after the hip replacement? Well, that's an interesting question. So again, it all uh, depends on on what the cause of the leg pain is. And so certainly uh, hip replacement or I'm sorry, hip arthritis or hip joint pain can uh, produce referred pain that radiates to the knee, for example. And, um, you know, so it can cause pain that goes down the leg. Now, that being said, uh, kind of like one of the earlier questions that was asked, um, Lower back or lumbar spine uh, issues can also cause pain that radiates down the leg. And so uh, those things can be associated with things like numbness or tingling. Um, and so that's really for the job of, of your provider to uh, ensure that there is, you're making an accurate diagnosis that helps to explain the symptoms for the patient and before you kind of embark on any um, surgical intervention. Um, so. Does a hip replacement relieve leg pain? Well, if the pain is being referred from the hip joint is the key um, and not coming from some other joint. Thank you. Are there any restrictions for um, activities after a knee replacement? Specifically, is biking still okay? Yes, absolutely. So in fact, we encourage um, you know cycling, walking, elliptical, swimming as a uh, kind of better activities to do after a joint replacement. My advice typically to our patients is um, to try to avoid those high impact activities like daily running for exercise or uh, running and jumping sports um, to try and preserve the life of the implant. Now, that being said, our modern day implants really um, are showing tremendous long-term data. And again, you know, you have to do what is uh, best for you both mentally and physically. And so while I would prefer that our patients do not um, run daily on their joint replacement, um, we would prefer that they do low impact activities uh, such as walking, cycling, um, elliptical and swimming, just to preserve the life of the implant, especially if they have it at a, at a rather young age. Great question. How long is the recovery from a knee surgery or from the hip surgery? Good question. So, uh, of course, everybody's different, but our general guidelines are that it's a, a little tougher to recover from a knee replacement than it is for a hip replacement. Um, a good guideline is about four to six weeks uh, after hip replacement surgery before folks are starting to kind of get back to a more normal situation. And more on the, you know, two to three month recovery time frame from a knee replacement. Now, the first six weeks after knee replacement uh, can be challenging, and that second six week period is usually quite better. Um, and usually people are really starting to turn the corner by three months post-op after knee replacement. That's a little bit sooner for hip replacement patients, um, but generally speaking, you know, six to 12 weeks encompasses both types of uh, surgery. Thank you. And I just want to say one other thing about that is that in particular with regard to knee replacements, um, you know, folks can continue to improve for a full year after the operation. And that's usually driven by as their quadriceps muscle gets stronger and stronger, it helps to control the knee replacement better. And so, you know, I think it's important that, uh, you know, 
the end game is not necessarily two or three months uh, after an operation. It's really this longer time period, but it, it is, uh, you know, it can be a long recovery time period for some. Everybody's different. Thank you. How long does a replacement last? Yeah, great question. So generally speaking, uh, joint replacement fails at a rate of 0.5% per year. And so modern day implants, uh, both hip and knee replacements um, can last decades for folks. In fact, um, uh, both hip and knee replacements um, that are executed well and uh, placed in a good position, done for the right reasons, uh, can last upwards of uh, 20 to 25 years. Um, that's presuming that folks are able to avoid some of the complications that can go along with these rather big surgeries. And, and so those complications include infection, loosening of the implants, and instability in both cases. Again, generally speaking, the rates of those things happening are 0.5% per year. And so that's a relatively small percentage, but if you're one of the unfortunate patients that experiences one of those complications, then certainly um, folks can be upset about that. But uh, a knee replacement and hip replacement that are executed well has the potential to last folks decades. Thank you. You mentioned rheumatoid arthritis. What is it? And is joint replacement surgery used as a treatment for rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, it is. And so uh, rheumatoid arthritis is an inflammatory arthritis where essentially the, you know, the body's host cells have kind of turned and are fighting against it itself. And so um, as opposed to osteoarthritis, which is uh, more of a the quote unquote wear and tear or degenerative type of condition, um, both involve inflammation, but rheumatoid arthritis has a tendency to have much higher levels of uh, an inflammatory component to it. Yes, it, uh, both hip and knee replacement uh, can treat rheumatoid arthritis um, because, you know, again, an indication for surgery is bone-on-bone uh, -bone degenerative joint disease of any type, whether it be osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or uh, other less common arthropathies. Good question. Thank you. How often can you get a cortisone shot? And is there a limit to the number of shots you can get? My advice typically is no more than uh, three cortisone injections in a year. So roughly every four months or so. And uh, there is no lifetime limit in how many injections you can get. Uh, our advice is to use them as long as they are effective for you. And so if the cortisone injections are providing sustained relief that lasts weeks or months, then um, I think that that is a very reasonable thing for you to do. Now, if the injections are becoming less and less effective over time and only providing uh, days or just a couple of weeks of, uh, of relief, well, then, you know, you may have to start considering other treatment options. Thank you. Are there any foods that help you avoid arthritis? Um, no foods that I am aware of necessarily that uh, help to prevent arthritis. Uh, certainly, you know, there, there are many um, types of diets out there these days that are uh, purported to decrease inflammation overall in the body, but I don't think that we have very strong uh, scientific data, at least within the orthopedic literature, to support a particular type of diet necessarily, other than you know, from my perspective, um, those things that allow folks to maintain a healthy weight and lifestyle. And so I think that that is, is my recommendation is to uh, try and utilize a diet that allows you to maintain a healthy weight, which is probably the most important thing for your joints. Thank you. Can you wait too long before getting a joint replacement? Well, certainly as uh, arthritis can conditions progress, then uh, range of motion can really uh, be affected in some cases. And the biggest predictor of post-operative range of motion, particularly with regard to, to knee surgery, is pre-operative range of motion. And so if someone has uh, allowed arthritis to progressively worsen to the point that they have really limited range of motion, that can certainly impact their functional outcome after a surgery. 
And so I think that that, that is the case that, um, that if you notice that your range of motion is really significantly decreasing, well, then you should talk to your um, physician or surgeon about it and uh, really make sure you understand the options and the impact on it. Thank you. What is dry needling and does it help with arthritis pain? Yeah, good question. So dry needling is a uh, technique that is often performed in our uh, physical therapy um, offices, um, not necessarily in uh, the orthopedic surgery office, but um, there is some literature to say that uh, dry needling can be effective for certain musculoskeletal conditions. Uh, dry needling does not necessarily uh, go into the joints, right? So it doesn't necessarily help joint pain, but there are some musculoskeletal conditions that can be really helpful to have dry needling for. Mm -hmm. Thank you. How do you handle a hip replacement when the patient has osteoporosis? Are there certain types of implants that are designed for that? Well, this is a great question. And this is where some of the, the fun technical aspects of our job come in, um, trying to you know, uh, manage uh, folks' medical conditions uh, with the the carpentry, the surgery that we do. And uh, so the short answer is yes, that in, in folks who have uh, poor bone quality due to osteoporosis, um, that we do use certain types of implants that can be a little bit more uh, gentle on the bone. And uh, particularly for hip replacements, uh, uh, those can be uh, cemented uh, hip replacements as opposed to those that are called press fit. And uh, so yes, there are techniques that we utilize to try and um, uh, be more gentle on those that have brittle bone. Great question. Thank you. Do you recommend over-the-counter knee braces or sleeves for walking? Yeah, so bra braces can be effective, particularly to help control swelling, as well as to uh, give folks a little bit more confidence in their knee. And so I usually tell people to start with an over-the-counter uh, knee sleeve and, and try a couple of different types. Um, you know, what we frequently hear here here in the office is that uh, they're too tight, they're too loose, uh, they don't fit quite right, they slide down or um, they're uncomfortable. But I think having one properly uh, fit um, can be helpful for some folks. And, you know, for arthritis in particular, what you're trying to do is control the, the swelling and uh, symptoms that you experience with activities. They don't necessarily need to be worn all the time, uh, but particularly for those activities that tend to maybe flare up your arthritic pain. All right, and our final question for the day is a two-parter. They are related to each other from two different people. One okay. person says that they're very active, have arthritis in their knee, and we're told that they need a knee replacement down the road, but the pain is affecting their sleep and activity, and they're wondering if they should just go ahead and get the replacement. Someone else is asking, when do you know it's time for a hip replacement? They've gotten used to the discomfort, but they don't have constant pain at this time. Yeah, my advice to folks is that uh, you have to be the one to decide if and when the time is right for you to have a joint replacement. And so, again, I think the keys are, number one, that you have bone on bone arthritis on an x-ray, whether it be of the hip or the knee. Number two is that you have daily pain that's impacting your everyday life. It's not so much that, um, you know, it's infrequent or more of a nuisance type of pain. It kind of gnaws at you and uh, impacts those things that you enjoy doing every day. Um, and then third, of course, that you've exhausted non-operative management. Now, some some patients have the most horrible looking x-rays and for whatever reason, tolerate it really well. Um, and uh, so, but you have to be the one that decides in you know close consultation with your physician or surgeon um, when the time is right for you. And uh, so I think that that is really the key. Our job is to counsel people uh, when they're candidates for surgery and uh, other things that can uh, impact their decision-making, but really, uh, again, joint replacement is an elective surgery that uh, you get to really decide if and when the time is right for you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Pincus, And thank you, everybody who asked a question and joined in today. If we were unable to get to your question today, we will answer it in the comments later. Dr. Pincus, would you like to close? Absolutely. Thanks, Margaret. 
Again, I just want to uh, give a shout out to our Ortho Virginia team for all the work that goes on behind the scenes to put on these uh, presentations. I really enjoyed the format and uh, thanks to everybody who, who signed in, watched it live and submitted questions.